All right. So anyway, welcome to a Book Creator uh, and your questions answered. So let me pull up a, a quick slide here real quick, a quick page in my book so I can at least tell you who I am. That way, uh, just pull up this real, this one real fast. Here, we'll pull this one up. All right. Anyway, so welcome everybody to our, um, I'm not sharing my screen. Hang on a second. <laughs> my name is John Smith and I know what I'm doing. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Good morning. My name is John Smith. I am the iPod teacher on Twitter and John Smith at bookcreator.com. So welcome to our live webinar today on YouTube and where we are going to answer your questions about Book Creator. Uh, a little bit about me, taught special ed for 12 years. I was a technology integration specialist for seven, and now I am the teacher success manager here at Book Creator. Uh, and again, we are here to answer your questions. Uh, I'm married. I've got three children, nine, six, and three. I love golf and I love clean cars. And I golf this morning, but I'm not going to clean cars because now it's raining. So we are excited uh, to, to get into this today to see what happens. And uh, I'm here to answer your questions. So on YouTube, uh, if you have questions, please put those into the, the say something line uh, to the right of our video so that you can ask those questions. And I would like to thank uh, both Dan and Sue Ann who are here helping me today uh, answering the questions and field things. So if you have any just random questions about Book Creator, this is your opportunity to get those questions answered. All right. So, and for those of you that are joining with me in uh, the actual uh, Zoom call, uh, I can check those out as well from here. All right, I suppose they should have like background music or something uh, going on here. Cheryl, Anna, uh, since you are in the Zoom call, do you have any specific questions? So Cheryl uh, says on her YouTube uh, screen, it still says waiting for book creator. Cheryl, if you go to YouTube and search book creator and then actually click on our um, Book Creator logo, you should see it live and you shouldn't get that message any longer. All right, and I think that I saw Anna. Um, oh, great. Uh, Sue Ann says they have a question from a Facebook user asking how we can delete pages in a book. And I also see that Dee says, hi, welcome, uh, Dee. Uh, so to delete pages in a book, let me back out of here real quick and just find a book that I can go ahead and do that with. So in Book Creator, once you're in a library, if you click inside your book, I can, oh, I have a, I have my own support ticket just popped up. How about that? Uh, in Book Creator, when you're inside of a book, there's a little tab right here that says Pages View. All right, and I love pages view. So when I click on pages view, there's quite a few things that you can do from here, uh, including moving your pages around, changing the order, uh, copying pages, inserting pages, but this is also where you are gonna delete those pages. So if, for example, I don't want this star page here anymore, I click the three dots. And when I click on those three dots, there is an option to copy, move, insert, or delete. And this is where I'm gonna click delete and confirm it and that deletes the individual page from the book. So that is a great question. Uh, I am glad that uh, you asked that. Thank you for asking that question. Uh, whoever you were, I appreciate it. Uh, D says, hi. All right, Suan, what do we got here? Can I copy content from one book to another book? Uh, so this was Cheryl. Uh, thank you, Cheryl, for the question. And at this time, there unfortunately isn't a way to copy content from one book to the next. Uh, like you might think. Um, there is a way that you can combine books. So if I had these two books here right now, uh, there's two solutions. I'll give you the, the harder one first, and then I'll give you the second one. So if I have content in this book, my playground book, and I want to put it in this book, the big book creator activity book, the only way to really do that is to go underneath one of the books, click on this icon of books, and use the option that says combine. So when I do this, I'll take the two books that I want. I will combine those. I'm going to hit next and I'll say combined. 
and create that book. And so what it's going to do is it's going to take those two books, it's going to suck them together, and it's going to um, then make this one giant book with these two books uh, combined. From there, what you can do is you can delete the pages that you do not want. So that's right now one of the easier ways to do it. So it's the longer way, but it's easy. So here are my two combined books. So there's the activity book, then followed by my playground book. So if I wanted to put, um, let's say I wanted this page right here that I'm shaking, if I wanted that page and then the rainbow page in there, I would just delete all of the extra pages. Uh, that's one way you could do it. Another way you could do it, and this is the way I tend to do it, especially if my page doesn't have any interactive content. So if I go to uh, like this page right here, if I don't have any act interactive content, what I will do is I will screenshot this page from my one book, just like this. And then I will go into the book I wanna put it in. We'll put it in this one here and we'll just put it on the cover. Uh, to make things easy. And then what I'll do is I'll just drag that page on here as an image, and then I can resize it and make it fit perfectly. That's really the two best options in my opinion. Uh, so combine the books or like I said, screenshot the page and add it in there. And that's one way to do it. All right, so hopefully that helps. Um, how do you get the comic fonts? I'm gonna make sure I'm in the right spot. So how do we get the comic fonts was another question that was asked. So to get the comic fonts, there's a couple of things that you first need to make sure that you do. When you create a book, all right, so when I click on this create a book option, there are two rows of book choices. The top row is our standard row. So there are no comic book features there. So if you clicked on the top row, you're not gonna find them. But then if you click on new book down underneath that has the comic features, this is where you're gonna find them. So I click the plus button, I choose comics, and then I choose uh, text. And then I can choose any text that I want. But if I choose like this text here, type in John Smith, hit done. Now I've got some comic fonts. And then I can click the inspector button and change the color, change the fonts here. So if I wanna choose any different fonts, that's how you do it. So you have to make sure when you create your book, you have to make sure that you're choosing one from the bottom row. All right. Uh, and then from Christine, I'm wondering if I can give my students editing privileges in the free account. Uh, so absolutely. So in the free account, uh, what you'll do is, um, there's a couple ways you can do this. When students join your library and they click on new book, they will be able to create a book inside your library. And then they can edit that book directly, all right, because it's theirs. And then you can edit it as well. The other option is if you, as the teacher, create a book, Christine, underneath there is a share button. And when you click on the share button, one of the options is to collaborate. So in the free version right now, uh, we are offering 90 days of collaboration. So if you click collaborate, then those students that are in your library have the option to edit that book as a like real-time collaboration. They can work on it together. If you don't want everyone in the library to be able to edit that book, you're gonna click this button that says change and you're gonna be able to choose which students you want to, um, you're gonna be able to choose which students you want to edit that book. So if you only want one or two students to edit it, you click change and choose those students. All right, and then uh, Jan, I'm trying to post my book creator books on Padlet, but the cover of the book is not showing. Is this possible? Um, so Jan, I guess I'm going to have to ask you a follow-up question on this. Um, when you uh, are sharing, I guess I would like to know how you're sharing uh, your book. If you are clicking the share button and publishing your book online and then putting the link in Padlet, uh, that would be one way of sharing. If you're just trying to share like the EPUB file, uh, I'm not real sure. So we're going to have to take a look at that. But if you could clarify for me, that would be great. Uh, and then Cheryl said I had images and text that I wanted to copy and paste from one uh, book into the next and it wouldn't let me do it. Uh, but she likes the idea of combining books um, and then deleting pages and then the screenshots even better. Great. Uh, Suan says from Laura, I comment on students work and provide feedback, revise, edit. Oh, can I comment on student work and provide feedback? So uh, the answer to that is yes, Laura. And there are a couple of ways that you can do this. Um, if you click the plus button and click shapes, 
one way that I'm seeing teachers do this is choosing a shape. And then inside it, if they double click, they type in their feedback and comments on student work. And then what they'll do is they'll just take that little shape box and put it off to the side. And then students are able to see their comments and feedback. So as the students write, they see the feedback, and then they can make adjustments. That's one way. Another way that you could do that is click the plus button, choose media, and then you could even do uh, something from your camera, let's say. And so I could record a video from my camera. It gives you a little countdown. Hey, Laura, great work today. Um, I think your paragraph and all of that stuff looks awesome. If you could just maybe add a couple of interactive elements or a photo, that would be great. So they can do video. So I can upload video feedback to my students and uh, just kind of shrink it down and put it over here to the side. That would be one way. Or the last way that I can think of that would be really helpful is the record button. So if you click the record button, uh, again, hit start, gives you a little countdown. And then I can leave feedback using the audio button. Here comes your feedback. Hit stop. And then there's the audio button. And you can use that. So those are the ways that I would use it. Uh, hopefully that helped you out there, Laura. Um, Jolyn, is there a way to shrink the creator page while you're working so that you can see something else on your computer? Um, so Jolyn, I'm not 100% sure what you're asking here, but I do think I might know. So I do want to show you something. I think this is kind of cool. Um, I, this is a feature that I think is kind of silly because I've seen it and I've never even really knew what it did. Uh, but if I hit the inspector button, there's a little pin right here to the right. And if I click on that pin, what it does is it takes my page and shoves it over a little bit so that the um, uh, the toolbar and all of the, the features are over here separate. Um, and they, but they don't need to, um, I don't need to, uh, you know, um, cover my page with the toolbar. So I think that's kind of a, kind of an interesting one, right? So you just hit the little pin button and then you can continue uh, editing and working while it's, while it's there. So anyway, maybe that's what you're asking. Uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure. And if you need me to clarify, um, if you could follow up, I'll go ahead and clarify with that. Um, So Cheryl says, and a few years ago when I was able to create a portrait book, so let's go to a portrait book, I was able to add a page background on the left in one color and on the right side in another color, can that still be done? So if I click on this left side, uh, Cheryl, and I click inspector and try to change the color, what it does is it will actually do it on both sides. Now, I, what's interesting about this is I had a second grader question me on this once, and what was interesting was we found a really interesting way to change this. So the student, then there's my daughter. Hi, Jojo. Uh, what was really interesting is that we screenshotted half the page in the color that we wanted on one side. And then we just changed the background. And then what we did is took that screenshot and dragged it over here and covered the other half of the page uh, in the color that we wanted. So. You can't do uh, two colors specifically, but you can kind of fake the system. So there is my quick, easy way uh, to do what you are asking. All right. Uh, Swan says, uh, from Ali, can I add PowerPoint files? So with uh, PowerPoint files, uh, what's going to happen is it's not going to work uh, in the in the way that you that you uh, want. I think you're going to want to people want to take those PowerPoint files, upload them and just turn it into a book. And it's not going to do that. So uh, the short answer to that one is no. Uh, Corinne, once you have completed a page, can it be locked from editing? So Corinne, I can. So for example, this image here, uh, when I'm doing this um, double, you know, double imaged uh, background, if I two finger click on it, one of the options is to lock. So I can go ahead and lock that element. So you can lock photos, you can lock text uh, so that uh, it can be locked from editing. Uh, the only trick there is if a student makes a copy of that book, they can still unlock and move those elements around. All right, and Jan asked, um, oh, from Jan asked, I share and publish online and then I get the link. Um, and when you're, and Jan, when you're putting it into the Padlet, it's not showing the cover. Uh, that's a good question. I'm not 100% sure of that. 
I know that Dan and Suan are both on here with me. Uh, maybe there's they have an answer for that one. Uh, I'm not sure why it wouldn't show up in Padlet. I'm guessing that has something to do with Padlet, but I, I couldn't say 100%. Okay, um, and then my, my thing keeps moving. So when I publish online, is that public? Uh, Jan asks. So when you publish a book online, and I click publish online, publish it, whoop, give it a title here, and publish it again. When I publish online, uh, it gives you this link. So right here where it says copy the link. The only way this is, it's going to be public, but it's only public to the people who have the link. So if you only share it with five people, those are the five people that are going to be able to see the book. You're not going to be able to, um, you know, search the book. You're not going to be able to look for it on Google. It's only it's only viewable by the people with that link. So hopefully that helps. Uh, D, I had a student doing his work on slides. Is there a way I can transfer his slides to Book Creator? So uh, again, D, there's a couple of options here for you. Um, one option, there isn't a way to take those slides and just automatically turn them into a book creator book. Okay, we don't have that feature. But what there's a couple things you can do. You could use the screenshot method where the student screenshots the slide, saves it to the computer, and then drags it into book creator, similar to the way I did here, where I took a, an old um, one page from one book, dragged it into my book creator book in another one. That would be that would be one method. Um, another method uh, for 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 doing that is if I click on the plus button and where it says media import, one of the options is to pull in things from your Google Drive. So the student could click on Google Drive, make sure he signed in, link the account, and then search for that uh, that uh, slides presentation. And then what it will do. Um, I'm not sure if I even have a slides presentation on here. So yeah, here's one. So if I pull in this slides presentation, it will bring the entire document into Book Creator and it will look like this. So then when you click on it, it will pull up, pull open the slide so that you can view it. Um, but there isn't a way to take slides and turn it into a book if, if that is um, specifically what you're asking. Um, Oh yes, can I move my video to the bottom left so that I'm not blocking the toolbar? Yep, absolutely. All right, and then D, uh, after my students have finished their books, is it possible for them to upload it to their Google Classroom account? Um, so so uh, D, this is a good one. So we do not sync necessarily with Google Classroom in the way that I think that um, most people would like. So there are a couple of ways that this can be done. So if a student finishes this book and we click share, they could download the book as an EPUB and then take that EPUB, upload it into their Google Classroom as evidence. And then the teacher though would have to take that EPUB, download it again and open it into Book Creator. Personally, my opinion on this one is uh, as a teacher, what I would do is make the assignment in Google Classroom and just say, when it's done, tell me that it's done. And then as the teacher, what you do is go into your actual library, see the student work, give it the grade, and then let the student know what the grade is. Uh, I think it's a much easier solution. Uh, the other solution then is that the student could um, publish the book online and get the link and share that link in Classroom. And then that way you can see the published link. So hopefully that hopefully that uh, helps and makes sense. Um, can we edit the length of the videos? Wanting to show you know one minute, not a minute and thirty seconds to eliminate credits uh, and ads at the end of YouTube. So um, when, Cheryl, when you embed YouTube content uh, into Book Creator, so if I go to YouTube here, and if I just click on a random video, oh look, we're live on there too. We'll go ahead with this Lamborghini video. Steep. I click on that. When you embed a YouTube video and I click share, and then I click this button that says embed, one of the options that it gives you uh, is to start the video, right? So you can click on start and where you want it to start. But if you copy this code and then go back to your book and you embed that code, so if I go to plus button media import and then embed, I can paste that code here, confirm the link, and then add it to the book. So here's our YouTube video. So what's nice about this though, uh, Cheryl, 
is that there is no there are no commercials at the beginning. Um, you just click the the plus button or the play button and it just starts. So that's nice at the beginning. Now your question was then at the end, is there a way to cut the credits out? So if I click it all the way here to the end, let's hit play. All right, so then there are those videos there. So unfortunately we cannot cut off the end of the videos uh, because it's embedded directly from YouTube. Uh, but we did get the beginning videos. We get the comments underneath, and usually that sidebar that pops up during the videos is gone. Uh, can you delete multiple pages at a time? That's a great question from RSH, and the answer to that is not yet. Um, I, I hope that's a feature we build in soon, um, but right now you can only delete one page at a time. Uh, Corinne, once you are ready to publish, can the link be taken and used to create a QR code? Um, absolutely. Uh, you can certainly do that. So if I go back to um, my book here and hit the share button and publish this book online again, because uh, I did, there we go, we published that book. If I copy this link here, so copy the link address and then go to uh, your favorite QR code maker tool. One of the ones I've used in the past is qrstuff.com. It's one I found probably 10 years ago and stuck with it. Uh, so from here, uh, if I click on where it says YouTube, or I'm sorry, website URL, and I just paste my book creator book in there, choose the style and um, select QR template. We're good there. And they've actually changed their website. I haven't been here in a while, uh, but then you just print the QR code uh, for that URL. And then there it is. So once it's downloaded, it will pop up. So you're just going to paste your uh, book creator published link into the QR code maker of your choice and you will be all set. And also don't forget um, that we are going to be doing a, a lot more webinars. So if you are new to Book Creator and you want to check out some of our future webinars, if you go to bookcreator.com slash webinars, you'll see a whole slew of stuff. Um, I just put a bunch in there for June. Uh, so we have getting started with Book Creator webinars, which will take a deep dive into every single feature that we have. We have a home learning webinar, uh, where we talk about how to use Book Creator in remote learning situations. We've got webinars by Monica Burns. We've got make it take it sessions that I'm going to be doing. We've got one book, one hour uh, sessions. So a lot of great things coming up. So definitely check those out if you are still interested. Um, how can I remove pages that are not being used? Uh, great question, uh, Ms. Grasso. So if I go into a book, if I click on this pages uh, button at the top, I can see all of the different pages that are in my book. Now, this was a really bad example. Um, but when you click on these three dots here, one of the buttons says delete. So I can click delete, confirm, and it will just delete all of those unwanted pages uh, from my book. So great, great question. And then uh, from Christy, I had students who wanted to add music, but it looks like there is only an option to add voiceovers. Is there a way to add music? And, and the answer to that is yeah. So if I go into my book and click on the plus button, media and import, one of the options is to import files from your computer. Now, I don't have any music files that I, that I have created, um, but if I'm a, a student and I can play an instrument and record audio uh, on my computer, it will pull up here as a little audio file. And so I just click on that and click open. And now it looks, this is a PDF, so obviously this is not what it will be looking like. Um, but when you upload that audio, it'll be a little audio button. So you can certainly add um, audio in the background. Um, the only thing I, I, I request or suggest is that you are very conscious of uh, copyright laws. And so when students are uploading music, I highly recommend that you, um, it's music that the students have created themselves or music that is um, copyright free. All right, Lee, if the picture that I import is too large, can I adjust it without, uh, without it now being too small and having white at the top and bottom of the frame? So let's see here, Lee. So what I'm assuming, um, and maybe this is bad assumption and maybe you can help us clarify this, but if I have an image and I'll bring this image in here and, and my apologies for my daughter who is playing in the background, if I bring this image in here and let's we'll pretend like it's it's way too big for the screen, right? And if I just if I bring it down a little bit, it never fits quite exact, right? So I try to bring it in, it's either too big or too small. 
and there's this kind of white background. I'm assuming that's what you're talking about. That might be it. Um, and if that's the case, then the best way to do that is to edit it on the side. Um, and usually what I'll do is I'll just take this image, I'll put it in for me on my Mac, I'll put it in preview and just adjust the image size so that it is 900 wide by 675 tall. Um, and that helps. If you're talking about a panel, so like if I had a panel here, um, I see this ha happen a lot where somebody will bring in an image like this, and then they'll have this really large image and they wanna to try to fit it inside this panel. And so what they'll do is they'll take this and they'll resize it and they'll try to put it in the panel like this and make it fit, whoops, hit the wrong button there. And they try to make it fit inside the panel and it doesn't quite work, right? Cause there's these weird white spaces. My suggestion is this, don't ever drag pictures on top of the panels. Um, I just click in the panel, right? And then it gives you two options. You can either take your still picture and add it and it fits perfectly inside the panel or you click this button on the left and choose your file. All right, and so now I go back to my desktop and I find um, that one screenshot, hit open, and now the screenshot gets pulled into the panel and fits perfectly inside the panel. So I think that might be what you're asking, um, but either way, those are the two best options um, in, in, in my opinion. Um, Cheryl, if books are created on an iPad and saved to Google Drive, uh, when saved, should it be saved as an EPUB? Yes. And then is it able to open in app.bookcreator.com to add it to their library as well? Yes. Uh, so as long as that's an EPUB that's been created in Book Creator, you can then import it into your online account. So the way you do that is under, you have to have a book made first in the library. And then under the book, you click on this icon of books and say import book. And so what you'll do is you'll find that, that EPUB file, import it, and it will pull it into Book Creator. Um, and then will iPads and the online be able to sync um, soon sharing books? We have staff using online and some students using iPads. So right now, Cheryl, they do not sync, uh, which you have uh, mentioned. But for me, uh, what I always do, and I actually have my iPad with me over here on my other side, is I just use Safari. So if I have cross-platform devices, then my preference is everything is done online um, because it works just really well that way and students can work on their books anywhere. If you work on just the iPad app, the process works. You can get it to sync. I'm uh, not sync, but you can get one book from the iPad to the online version. It's just not a sync process. So um, something to think about. But I use the book creator on the iPad online all the time and it works really smooth. So hopefully that helps you out. Uh, okay, great. D says, thank you so much. Loves the website. Um, I just, I hope it had uh, more ways of linking student work on Google Classroom. And uh, D, certainly understand your, um, your thoughts there. And it is definitely something that we can take to the team. We are always trying to improve Book Creator and find ways, uh, new ways uh, for it to work and sync with other things that teachers use. Uh, so that's definitely something we can take to the team. Uh, Ms. Grasso, uh, we're making a school book. There will be about 80 pages, combination of text and pictures. Can I still download it as a PDF? Uh, is there a size limit? So, uh, so no, you can still download it as a PDF. Um, obviously, the bigger it is, the longer it may take, uh, but you can certainly do that. Um, uh, Dale, what's the globe looking icon that was at the top of the screen? So the globe looking icon right here that's on my book, uh, that means that that book has been published online. So if I click on that globe, it will tell you that here, this little blue link that says copy to your clipboard, that's your virtual clipboard. Uh, that confuses a lot of people too. So it's basically just a virtual clipboard. It copies that link and then you go to wherever you wanna go and paste the link and that will allow people to view your book. So the globe is just a, uh, an icon that tells you that the book has been published. Um, and Cheryl, the students that have the iPad app do have it paid across the board. Yep, I certainly get it. Uh, and I will definitely take that information to your team. Um, Heidi, if you start a book in one format, uh, size, and realize that you want to change the format or size, is that possible once you have started the book? And the answer to that is no, uh, Heidi. So once you start, you need to stick with that size uh, that you have. 
I have had a few instances where I've done that myself. And for me, the screenshot is the best option. So I'll screenshot parts of it, bring it over into the other sized book that I want. Um, but definitely commit to that book once you get started. That's the best option. All right, and then Susie, my library is locked. How can I unlock it? Yes, this is a question that we get frequently as well. So I'm gonna bring you here to the teacher dashboard. And Susie, I'm assuming that you're talking about this library right here that says my books and it has a lock on it. So the, the answer to your question is you cannot uh, unlock it, okay? That book, that library right here, the my books library will always be locked. And the reason that it's locked, in my opinion, um, and I'm, uh, is because that, that library is really for you to do a um, yeah. rough draft, try things out. And there's no fear yeah. that you're gonna publish a book accidentally or uh, students are gonna yeah. join that library. It's really yeah. just there for you uh, to test things out, try things, like I said, rough draft it. All of the other libraries that you create will be unlocked and that, those are the libraries that you can uh, invite students to join. All right, so hopefully that helped answer that question. Um, Heidi, once it, the book is published, is it still editable? And that is a great question. Um, yeah. I know that a lot of times uh, teachers want to go back and make things. And in the past, um, you know, it, it becomes difficult, right? It becomes like old school file sharing, make the edits, publish the edits, unpublish, make the edits, publish the edits. Uh, but what's really nice about Book Creator is once that book is published, I can continue to make edits to that book and it will continue to show up online automatically. All right, so that's really cool. Can you copy paste audio from one book to another book? Uh, so again, the answer to that question is no, you cannot copy elements from one book and paste them into another book. You can copy elements from one page to another page inside of the book, but once you go out of that book, you cannot uh, add something into another book. Uh, uh, Divya, can we add animations? Um, and this is a great question, and I'm gonna follow that question up with another question. And I would say, it depends on where it's from. So if you created an animation, if you created an animation in a tool that allows you to embed that animation into something else, then I would say the answer is probably yes, because we do have that embed feature. I showed it on um, a YouTube video. So when I click the plus button, media import, and then over here to the right is that embed feature. If your, uh, the tool that you use to create an animation has an iframe, you can paste it right here and add your animation to a page in Book Creator. Um, but we don't have an animation specific tool uh, in our tool right now. Uh, Dale, in order to have more than one library, do I have to join at a different level and cost point? Great question, Dale. So for the free version of Book Creator, you get this locked library, which again is just a rough draft area, but then you get one additional library and up to 40 books. So um, those uh, are what you get with the free version. Then we have a paid plan that gives you 180 books split between three libraries, and then we have a thousand books with unlimited libraries. So you just have to uh, make that decision, uh, which one is gonna be the most appropriate for you and for your students uh, or your school and kind of go from there. And then uh, we can publish books from the locked library, correct? And the answer to that is no. So if I go down here, uh, I'm sorry, I can publish books from the locked library, yes. Um, but it's again, it's somebody with the link can see it, but I cannot inv invite students. Sorry about that. And then uh, Ms. Grasso, I'm so jealous. You have so many libraries. <laughs> yes, I have too many libraries. Uh, and if you looked at my archive libraries, uh, Ms. Grasso, it would be even worse. So uh, we're not going to go there unless somebody asks that question. All right. Uh, Cheryl, do you get 40 books in my books with an additional 40 books in the library? Or is it 40 books combined total uh, between, the, um, between both? And um, you know what? I'll be honest. I'm gonna I'm gonna defer that one to Sue Ann. So Sue Ann, can you answer that question real quick? Um, is it 40 both or 40 total? Um, and I'll be honest. It's because I don't really play around uh, in the locked library. You All right. you can have uh, 40 books in your my books and 40 books in your library as well. So All 80. Right. Thank you, Sue Ann. All right. And uh, Susie, can I move the books in my locked library to the unlocked library? Yep, so if I click on my book here in this library, 
Uh, underneath, there is a share, or I'm sorry, the icon with the books. I click on that and say move. So I click move to, and I choose which library I want it to go into, and then it goes there. And you can also copy books from one library to the next. So if you don't want to actually move the whole, lot, the whole book, you can do so. From Walnut Acres Elementary, can students collaborate on one book? Absolutely. So let me go ahead and get out of this library and go back into a different library. So in uh, not the locked library, but any of the other libraries that you create, uh, I can invite students to join that library. And then once they're in there, underneath your book, there's a share button. I can click on collaborate. So um, as mentioned earlier, by default, if I say uh, everyone in the library, then that means any student who has access to this library has access to edit the book, or I can click change and I can choose which students I want to participate. So if I say these three students right here, I click done, then only those three students can collaborate on that book, but they can certainly work on them at the same time. And it's, I've done it many times uh, with lots of teachers and students, and it's really, Excuse me, it's really great, works really well. From Silvana, um, can I share a book to someone for someone to edit? Uh, yeah, so uh, Silvana, one of the ways you can do that is what I just showed, where you can invite that student to your library and then you turn on collaboration so that they can edit that book. Another way that you can do that is, uh, let's say if you're a teacher and you wanted to invite another teacher into that library, same rule, right? You pull up the invite code, they join your library, but then from this drop down here, um, I can choose, right? So if I go with Christy here and I click the three dots, I can promote her to co teacher. And once I have promoted her to co teacher, she now has full access to this library and all of its features and editing and all that good stuff. So you could do it one of those two ways. And again, the collaboration is normally part of our paid plans. Um, normally, we give away a 14 day trial. But right now, uh, we are um, giving away 90 days of collaboration for everybody uh, to test out. Um, Cheryl says, will we eventually be able to have collaborators only seeing the book we invited them to work on, not seeing the entire library? Uh, and is co-teachers a paid feature? Yes, co-teachers is a paid feature. Um, and then... Uh, having collaborators only see the book that we invited them to work on and not the entire library. So if the books in the library are created by the teacher, then whoever is invited into that library will see those books. If the books are books created by students, then what you can do is you can turn off the ability for students to see other student books. So what you do is in the library, you go up here to the top right where the gear icon is. If you click on the gear icon, one of the options is um, students can read other books, other student books, right? And if you turn that off, then like I said, the only books they will see in the library are that of the teacher. All right, uh, Luana, uh, can I add only part of a video or only whole videos from YouTube? Uh, so that's a great question. Um, and when you go to embed a video from YouTube, all right, so if I go again, if I go to YouTube, click that share button and click on this button that says embed, then the only option that YouTube allows is to change the start of the video, right? So if I start the video at one minute and 15 seconds, all right, then this code will change and it will only allow me to start at one minute and 15 seconds. I cannot change the ending of that video, but that's a great question. And I'm sure that that's probably more on, that's more on YouTube's end than on our end, um, but it would be really cool if you could do that. Uh, Ms. Grasso, can anyone with the different emails join your library using an invite code? Uh, for example, Google email or Office 365, so yes. Um, I have lots of people that, that join libraries that I've created that have different emails. It, the only thing that matters uh, it, in that instance is when they go to uh, this, oops, when they go to, not that site, when they go to here uh, and they sign in, they have to have a book creator account. And so as a teacher, uh, they just have to sign in with one of those accounts. And then when they go to uh, join your library, so in their teacher dashboard, if they scroll all the way to the bottom where it says join a library, they'll just put that code in and they will be able to join. 
Um, and then Walnut Acres, did I hear correctly? Only a teacher can add collaborators, not students. So great question. Uh, let me go back up here to my library. And so this is a newer feature that we just added. And so uh, this is a good one for clarification. When I go to my settings icon in the library, um, it used to be that the teacher was the only one who could control collaboration. Now there is the ability for students to turn on collaboration for their own book, which would then allow other students to edit their that student's book. You can turn that on or off. So right here in the library settings, it says students can enable collaboration. By default, it's on. If that scares you and you don't want students turning on collaboration for other students to get into their books, you would turn this button off right here. Heidi, did you already explain how to, or if it's possible to import a PDF? Uh, does each page of the PDF show as a separate page in the book? So the answer is yes and no, and I'll show it to you again. So inside of a book, um, if I click the plus button, media and import, I can import a PDF. So if I go to my files or my Google Drive and I just pull up a PDF and click open, what it will do is it will, uh, it will pull in the PDF like this. All right, and so here's the PDF. Now, it will not take those PDFs and automatically turn them into a page in a, in a book. But if I click on the PDF, it will open the PDF and I can scroll and, and move around through the PDF like normal. Okay, great question. Um, yeah, so uh, Suan brought up a good point and I wanna make sure uh, that we talk about this. So when you go to the website to sign in, right? When you go to Book Creator's website, app.bookcreator.com, what happens by default, it's set up like this and teachers get excited and they just start clicking buttons. And what happens is right here, the tab is set up for student sign in. So if you are a teacher and you click sign in, uh, if you do it for the very first time and you click sign in as a student, it's gonna ask you for a code and you're gonna be confused, right? Cause you're like, I don't have a code. I just wanna get started. It means you signed in incorrectly. So you're gonna log out and then you're gonna click this button that says teacher and you're gonna sign in. Teachers, you are always teachers. It doesn't matter if you join somebody else's library or not. You are always teachers. I highly recommend um, teachers do this sometimes. They're like, well, I want to sign in as a student to see what it looks like as a student. Don't do that. <laughs> it signs you in as a student, and it will downgrade your account. All right? And so what we don't want to see happen is we don't want a bunch of teachers who have a bunch of libraries click student sign in, sign in as a student, and then lock their accounts. All right? Because if you do that, then what has to happen is you have to... Um, reach out to us and we have to help fix things, right? It's a mess. You don't want to do that. You are always teachers, all right? No matter what, you're always teachers, always click teacher, sign in as a teacher. Your students are always students. So please make sure they sign in as students because every once in a while, either by accident or by design, students will sign in as teachers. We have worked very hard uh, with privacy, all right? We have signed lots of agreements with states, with schools, even whole countries on signing privacy agreements. And when students sign in as teachers, all of that privacy that we have worked so hard on uh, gets kind of thrown out the window. So you don't wanna do that, all right? So teachers are always teachers, students are always students. Okay, uh, Cheryl, which is suggested to use, embed codes or adding a link, a web link uh, from the text box area? So Cheryl, that's a great question. And for me, the answer is whatever you want it to look like, <laughs> all right? Um, I will tell you one thing that I'm not a big fan of. I will copy this link right here. I see teachers do this in books. They'll go and add a text box and they'll do something like, oops. Uh, oh, so it, it won't even do it, which is really good. Uh, but I have seen teachers like try to put an entire text of link on here. And it's like this link is like a thousand you know, characters long. Uh, and it just makes your book look really ugly. Uh, so in my opinion, uh, there's a couple of ways, right? If I add text and then I could just say, um, read this, highlight the, the word, click the link and paste the text in there and save it. All right. And it doesn't like my, oh, it's because it, I didn't, it's not a, it's not a real book. So that's, that's why that happened. Um, paste, let me do this. I'll go to YouTube. We'll copy this link here. We'll go back to the book. And if I click 
the plus button text and then add some text. Um, I see teachers do this. All right. And I, I think that, and then they'll be like, oh, it's a little hard to see. We'll make it a little bit bigger. I see books with this and I just think it looks ugly, right? I'm not a big fan of that. So I don't do that. What I would do is just click the text button and say, you know, watch this, highlight it, and then put it in here and link it. And then that looks way cleaner than what I just had. Um, if it's a video from YouTube or something that you've embedded from another website, I would just embed it. Um, it, it looks better than just saying, click here and go somewhere else. Uh, from Laura, who exactly uh, sees student books if we allow them to publish? Great question, Laura. It's whoever you send the link to. Uh, so if you send the link to grandma and grandma clicks on it, grandma's going to watch and look at the book. Um, if grandma sends it to her friend, then the friend's going to watch that book. So uh, whoever gets the link, that's who's going to be able to see it. Cheryl, can we you put a link on a photo as well in the same way? Yeah, so photos are great. So I'm going to click on uh, plus button media and import, and I'm just going to pull in a photo here. We'll go with dog and I'll find my favorite dog picture and we'll add that picture in. So here is my dog picture. If I resize it, move it around once it's outlined. So if I click it once and I click the inspector button right here, there's a way to hyperlink the image to a website. So now when you read the book online, you click on the dog and it will take you to the YouTube video. You can also hyperlink to specific pages. So if I click on a dog now, it'll take me to page 10 of the book, if I had a page 10 of the book. Great question. Um, all right, that was from Laura. We're, uh, yeah, so lots of privacy concerns. Um, here's, here's my general rule of thumb. If there are privacy concerns, um, I certainly understand. And my suggestion, and this is what I did when I was in a classroom, when I made a book, if I thought there were privacy concerns, I would send a permission slip home to my parents. And I would just say, here's a really cool project we're gonna do. This is why it's really cool. Here's how your child's gonna participate. Um, do you wanna participate? And here are the options. Full participation, name, photo, video, everything is in the book. Uh, limited participation, photo, video, work is in the book, but no name. Or very limited participation where it was just your writing shows up in the book. And I'll be honest, we've published 155 books over the last eight years. And of those 155 books and hundreds and hundreds of students, I've had three parents say, I don't want my kid's face or name or something like that in the book. And I certainly understand. All right, certainly understand. So um, talk with your parents, make sure that they're okay with it. Like I said, in my experience, most parents are perfectly okay with sharing books uh, and seeing their kids online because they think it's amazing. Um, if the privacy concerns you, I would definitely turn off the student's ability to publish their books on their own. Uh, I wouldn't do that. I would leave it up to the teacher. Check with your school media policies, check with who signed those media policies and, and just make sure everything's okay. But like I said, in my experience, We've got teachers around the world making millions of books a month and um, everything is, is good. So, but definitely check with your own schools uh, and to see if, if, if there's any issues that you need to address. Um, is there a sample that you, uh, is the sample you are working on a comic book because I don't have those awesome fonts. Wow, <laughs> right? So Dale, uh, back here at the beginning, when I go into a library, if I click on new book, if you choose one of the books from the top row, you're not gonna get those comic options. These are our standard books, but if you choose one of the options down here at the bottom, then you do get all of those features. I don't have any crazy features uh, that anybody else doesn't have. Uh, is, it easy, is, it a, is there an easier way to cut and paste pictures in the book? Um, so Silvana, if, I guess the question is, if, if you're already in a book, and I go into my book and I have that image of the dog in here. Can I cut and paste that from one page to a next? Yeah, I just click copy and paste uh, and it will be fine. But if you're talking about moving between books, then no, there isn't really an easy way to do that. All right, and Monica, how can I delete blank student books? So underneath a book, for example, here's a blank one. Underneath this book in your library, if you click on this icon, click that and then click delete book. And then, oh, I have to unpublish it first. Sorry, if I, so if I unpublish my book, 
stop publishing, stop publishing. Go ahead. I'll be there in a second. Go ahead. Okay. So if I click this and click delete book, I can now delete that book and it will be gone. All right. So I have another webinar this afternoon that I am going to have to get ready for. Uh, I appreciate everybody being here today. So I'm going to shut this thing down in three minutes. So uh, any last quick questions, I will give you about three minutes. Oh, it's down to two minutes, three minutes, two minutes. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, shut things down. I appreciate everybody being here. This was a very active webinar with lots of great comments coming in through uh, or through YouTube. So I appreciate everybody being here today uh, for our grand experiment. Um, maybe in the comment section, you can tell us if this was helpful or if you enjoyed this. Uh, maybe we'll do this again. Um, but from now, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Uh, Monica, two quick questions. Collaboration, can we remove someone from collaboration? Uh, yes, you can certainly do that. So when you click on the collaboration button, um, if I have it set up, right, so that these three students or four students are collaborating, if uh, you know Andrea here is causing some trouble, I can click on that and remove her uh, from the collaboration for that book. So that's one way you can do it. Yep. Um, all right, so that was one of the two questions. Um, all right, so again, it looks like uh, lots of thank yous coming in here. So that's awesome. I really appreciate everybody being here. Um, and Darlene, looking to find out how to delete people that I invited to my library. Yes, great question. So if I've invited a bunch of people to this library, up here to the top left, Darlene, is this little drop down that says everyone's books. So if I click on this, whoops. I can see all of the people that I've invited to this library. And so let's see here, the Camille, she's causing some issues. If I click on those three dots, I can remove this user from the library. Now, this does get a little bit tricky because if she remembers that code, right, to your library, she can enter that code and rejoin. So if you do decide to remove people, then if I click on where it says invite code, I can expire the old code. So now you just need to give the new code to everybody so they can get back into your library. And Ms. Grasso says, please do this again. I love this. Um, awesome. I saw this. I saw a message as we were getting ready to give a PD on Book Creator. Oh, great. So did I give Book Creator to your whole your whole group, Ms. Grasso? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, I'm, I'm glad that this was uh, helpful for everyone. Um, looks like we had 27 people, at least right now, uh, watching online on YouTube and a few other people that were in the Zoom call itself. So. Uh, anyway, yes, I'm very, very appreciative that you are all hearing uh, here. Uh, and Cheryl, no problem. Glad you stayed in the Zoom as well uh, and, and being a guinea pig. Um, uh, and not easy to answer questions fired at you uh, on the spot. Uh, I'll be honest, uh, I'm not a lesson plan kind of person, and I'm much better when people fire things at me on the spot. So thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, oh, I see a last question from Darlene. Can you hide books from your library from other students? Um, so you cannot hide your own books. Uh, once, if you have books in your library and students join your library, they're going to see those books. Um, but you can hide students' ability to see other student books. So if I click on this setting icon, I can turn on or off the ability for students to see other student books. And then uh, if I turn that off, they won't see it. They'll only see the books that you created. Okay. Great. Well, thank you, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and shut this thing down so that I can prep for my next webinar, uh, which is a make it take it session. So I'm looking very, very much forward to uh, having teachers join and just come to me with questions and ways that we can incorporate Book Creator into their classrooms. Uh, Suan, do we have any final comments from you or Dan? No, all good with us. All right, sounds good. So I'm going to stop the sharing here and I'm going to end this webinar. Thank you everyone, have a great day, happy bookmaking and be safe out there. Bye-bye.